hear you playing pickleball. That's all I Good. Good afternoon and uh, welcome uh, to this uh, new, our new Cape Girardeau Sportsplex. How many of you have not been in this Sportsplex before? You? Okay. Most have. It's been frequented by uh, many thousands of people already since we opened in, in May. Oh, what a great day uh, here in Cape Girardeau at our new uh, Cape Girardeau Sportsplex. We actually wanted to hold this news conference on the field at Kappa Hall, but Mother Nature uh, said no. Before we get started, I want to make several introductions. I want to introduce, uh, uh, number one, our uh, city manager, Scott Meyer, uh, our deputy city manager, Molly Hood, um, Councilman uh, Bob Fox, your, where is he, your new mayor, come April. Um, I don't think writings will beat you, Bob. <laughs> uh, I saw Victor Gunn, councilman. Is there any other councilman here that came in that I didn't uh, recognize? Okay. Um, also want to recognize our chamber uh, president, John Maynard, who's been influential and in, uh, along with us uh, during this process. We're here today to talk baseball. Uh, baseball is America's game. Uh, it is uh, in our area, too. It's, a, it's our summer pastime. It's soon going to be baseball time. Baseball has always had a very strong presence here in Cape Girardeau, as we all know. And we're announcing today a strong enhancement to the baseball uh, products that are offered here in our area in Cape Girardeau. But prior to making that announcement, I want to review some uh, local baseball history, our current baseball presence, and recognize some of those citizens who in the past have been and are currently involved in baseball here in Cape Girardeau. And I would ask that you please hold your applause till I uh, get those uh, that I want to recognize uh, who are standing with me here uh, Introduce, and I ask them as I introduce them to uh, to wave to the crowd. First, we have an outstanding youth program here in Cape Girardeau through our city parks recreation department, both at Arena and at Shawnee Park. Youth begin when uh, the bat is almost as tall as the player. I can attest to that because I had a great grandson start last year down in Arena Park. I thought. There's a start of something big, five years old and swinging that bat. I see Robbie Gard just came in. Uh, Council, thank, thank you for being here. Those programs, Parks and Rec, are led by a, a, a great staff and led by our Parks and Rec director, Julia Thompson-Jones. One of her up here does a great job with, with our youth program. Next, uh, a long-time organized and successful Babe Ruth American Legion program led by years, years and years, by very recognizable names here in Cape Girardeau. Uh, John Doc Yallily, right here, and Bill Boner, sitting next to him for years, dedicating their service to the youth of our area. And I also want to recognize a new young coach now on the scene, in the Legion area, and that's Josh Meyer. Just happens to be Scott's son. So Josh, you're here. Next, where would we be in the early spring without Red Hawk baseball? Soon to be starting. Uh, Southeast Missouri State Red Hawk baseball. I'd like to recognize Southeast uh, Athletic Director Brady Barkey and Coach Andy Sawyer. Uh, Andy could not be here. He's had a uh, he had a, a, a speaking engagement and could not be here uh, at this point. But I would make a comment that Andy and Coach Sawyer aided in our, our, our first contact with the commissioner 
Dennis Baston of the Prospect League as we begin our discussions toward the invitation uh, for Cape Girardeau. And uh, that first contact came from Coach Andy Sawyer. Next today has been possible, made possible by, to me, two very important things. Number one, the Capitol Hoff Field Committee. It involved many people through the years, but it was really led by Jess Bowen and the Bowen family. Their work brought Capitol Hoff Field from literally just a, a dirt track um, into a quality and presentable playing field. In the, later days. Then number two, and, and more recently, the partnership that was established between the city of Cape Girardeau and, the, and Southeast Missouri State University, which enabled the completion of our new turf field at Capitol Hill. Those two things caught Dennis Baston and the commissioner of the Prospect League and uh -huh. And if we wouldn't have had those two through the years in history, and more currently the turf field, probably wouldn't have had that invite to what we're about to announce. My personal thanks to uh, Jess Bowen and also to Brady Barkey at Southeast uh, for that. Both the work of the committee and the partnership, as I said, were very critical and vital toward this invitation. Finally, the Cape Capitals dating back into the 1800s, spanning now three centuries. Most recently led by Jess Bolin and the Bolin family for over 50 years. I want you now to recognize and, and Jess, Tom, I think that could not be here um, at this point in time, his son, and their late wife and mother Mary, who Jess will uh, tell you was the glue that kept the Capitals together through the years. Um, but I, and I'm gonna ask Jess to say a few words concerning their announcement and their future at the end of this news conference, but please help me recognize Jess Bowen and the history that he's established in baseball in Cape Girardeau. take a minute to recognize a few key individuals and businesses who have been influential in many of these programs through support and through sponsorships. We've talked to all these people about what we're about to announce. We look forward to their continuing involvement and their continuing support. Mark and Scott Rhodes from the Rhodes. Jeff and Jim Maurer from Rhodes 101. Mike and Mark Kofeld. Doc and Kevin Ford. Gary, John, and Rex Rest, and Earl Norman. Talk to all these people, very supportive of baseball, have been in the past, and are going to be in the future, and wanted to recognize them. And I, are any of them here? Gary Rust, I think, is here. Yeah, we'll give, we'll give Gary a, a hand on behalf of all the other people, too. Thank you for all your support. my honor and privilege to officially announce the approval of Cape Girardeau as the newest member of the Collegiate Woodbat Wood Bat League, the Prospect League. Play will begin in June 2019. I want to say congratulations to the team owner, local resident Andy Patel, his wife Anissa, and his management team, Jim Limbaugh and Mark Hogan. And I want to thank you uh, personally for your confidence in the Cape Girardeau. The Prospect League consisted, uh, Dennis, of 10 teams in 2017 and are in the process of expanding to a 16-team league. We've researched, they've researched us and we've researched them. We did some traveling, went to Terre Haute, Indiana, these teams uh, in the last year stretched from uh, Missouri on the east through Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, uh, into uh, West Virginia and Pennsylvania. And are 
expanding in 18 and in 19. They will play a 60 game schedule starting approximately the 1st of June and completing uh, just the first part of August. Could stretch a few days. Uh, probably will here because there are some playoffs and we intend, I think, to uh, be in those playoffs early on. <laughs> and I'm pleased that we're joined today by the commissioner who's worked with us so closely, the commissioner of the Prospect League, Dennis Bastion. Thank you for uh, your uh, uh, counsel and, and uh, dedication in working with us as we've uh, gone through this, this process. As you can see, uh, the deer won in the hunting uh, escapade uh, last fall. Uh, but Dennis is very active and is the commissioner uh, of the Prospect League. He also has ties to Cape Girardeau. He's a graduate of Southeast Missouri State, and he currently has a daughter attending Southeast. So please welcome Dennis to uh, Cape Girardeau. They live in This will be an economic driver for our city, as out-of-state fans, family, and Major League Scouts will be coming to Cape Girardeau and attending games. There will be major improvement, improvements to Kapaw Field in 18, 2018 and early 19. Watch for further announcements as we proceed with plans and architecture on Kapaw Field. Now I would like the team general manager, Mark Hogan, to come forward to make a few comments on behalf of the team. Mark. Good afternoon, and uh, we welcome all of you. Thank you for your attendance today. Uh, I stand with some of the greatest guys in the world that I've learned my baseball from, and they have shared so much with us. Uh, Harry, we appreciate your comments, Julie, your wisdom for helping uh, develop things and get us to the level. I walked into this facility for the first time, just blows me away that Cape Girardeau is getting on the map like this. And we're excited about the things that are coming Kappa Hall's way. Further improvements that are going to make our fan experience amazing. And that's what we're looking forward to. Uh, the field's in great shape. Um, Probably without all the work that was done to get the turf on the field, we wouldn't be standing here today because of the usage. So we're very grateful for that. I'll be your general manager for this ball club. Uh, I'm excited about it. I miss baseball. Uh, wasn't uh, interested in being on the field all the time. That's a little different structure, a little different type of approach. Uh, but I'm looking very forward to helping develop the uh, not only the, the involvement of our new program with the community, but more importantly, help to uh, structure things like coaching staffs, help bring in the right type of people to lead this program, and also, obviously, the acquisition of quality players from around the country. So, uh, we got a big job ahead of us. We're ground zero. We have nothing right now. <laughs> we don't even have a name. We don't have a logo, we don't have a mascot, but we're going to ask the community to help us with that, and we're very excited about that. So, um, I hope I'm let, not letting the cat out of the bag. That's back. great, <laughs> you did. So we're, we're gonna open that up, because you know we want to uh, just find out what our fans want, that sort of thing. We know they're, a, you know, what a strong baseball-loving community and region we have, obviously starting with the Cardinals, and, you know, but the stuff that, that we've been up and able to do over the years between the university and the Caps and the Legion, um, it's just amazing. And to bring in a club that will uh, help some college boys get the exposure. Several of the guys that have played in the Prospect League are major leaguers now. Um, it's a very select deal. You can't just show up. You've got to be asked to come in. So there will, there will be active recruiting for these individuals. So. We're looking forward to it, and uh, I look forward to sharing more with you all as uh, we venture into this. But thank you so much for coming out. It's a nice showing today. Thank you. Now we ran, as we worked through this process over the last nine months, there were many issues to solve and, and, and some roadblocks. And we, no, not roadblocks.
roadblocks, there, there are opportunities. How can we make this issue be an opportunity? And one of the issues that we had to work through was how can we make it work for the Kappa Hut? And Jess, that was an issue. Uh, but we made it an opportunity, and, and, and just, we made it happen. Uh, there's more baseball. And one thing I wanted to be sure that uh, Jess Bowen, who's meant so much to baseball, uh, to Cape Girardeau and to the youth of our community um, over the last 50 plus years in so many ways, uh, to uh, stand here with us and to have an opportunity to uh, address you for a, a few moments about the Cap Haws, and they have new opportunities too. So, welcome Jess Bowen to the microphone, Jess. Thank you. Um, nice to see everybody here, and congratulations on the group coming in with Prospects League. I hope they have a lot of success. I will do anything I can to help them become a success. I just wanted to tell you real quickly here <clears throat> about how did we get here. here. Uh, Forty-five years ago, like you said a while ago, the baseball field, the diamond was dirt. There was no permanent fence. The foul pole was 10 feet high. No dugouts. You sit in the dugout and you had your head hit the roof. People fall through the grandstands. So there's some very important people that got the ball, got the ball field to the point where the university wanted to play there, and it was suitable for OBC play. And I would be really a hypocrite if I didn't at least want to acknowledge in front of all you people some of the people that made that happen. And I'll just mention three. There's a lot of people more than that, but. First is my wife, Mary. The kindest person I ever met. The base, I never met a woman that loved baseball like her. All you women out there, let me tell you what she did. When we first started, the old school board had to have the numbers put up for the innings like Chicago or like some of those old fields. She was pregnant with her first child and she climbed the back of the school board and sat on the school board for a doubleheader and put the numbers up. <laughs> That's the kind of dedication she had. She, she raised every dime for the press box that you got out there now, and then all the things inside the press box, air conditioners and the refrigerators, everything else. And so I just wish she was here because of the improvements of Cap Oil Field. Where was, it, where was the turf at when I was trying to get these rain out games in? <laughs> uh, but anyway, it's a pleasure to play out there and the other things that's gonna happen in this field in the future is gonna be just beauty for, for me. I, and I just wish she was here to see it. Uh, another person is Jake Crosno. Jake Crosno was on my committee. He was one of the original people, Doc was one. Jay, me, and Jim Green. And Jay worked hour upon hour upon hour as the field chairman, not the committee chairman, but the field chairman, and just put hour upon hour out there. And, and I want to thank him for helping get the field acceptable to standards we had to meet. And then last, this guy right here. You know, I believe in opportunities and seizing the moment. Well, this is the moment, and I'm going to seize the opportunity. I played for him, so you know how old he is. <laughs> Doc and I are not old school, we're just old. We believe, we believe in the change, we believe in that thing good. But Bill there and I played the same years for Doc that... Uh, for American Legion program, and the worst decision Doc ever made in his life, ever, in baseball, was Bill. I remember a game in St. Louis or Festus, I think it was, Bill pitched the second game, or the clinching game for us to advance American Legion baseball, and he struck out 12 in like eight innings, and was just mowing them down, and we were winning, and Doc had an ace on the team, but he was a little tired. And he brought in Larry Bohannon, who wound up pitching professionally with the Houston Astros, and he was our ace. 
But we all came out of the game for the ninth. And you can tell by Doc's face we lost. <laughs> but I'll tell you, this guy is a legend in baseball in Cape Verona. He is the guy. And, and he coached 40 years and never had a kid of his own that played for the team. He just loved the game. Dedicated his life to helping do anything out there on that ball field he wanted to. In fact, the committee that, that I was chair, it was, a, it was a, a, a deal where the committee really had responsible for Capital Park, a partnership with the, with the city, uh, parks commissioners and, and their employees, and the university. And it worked. It really worked, the three of us working together. And Doc worked just diligently on everything that he could do. In fact, the committee was a nickel and dime committee compared to what we got now. And the committee had to borrow money from Doc to, to pay the bills a couple of times. But anyway, I just heard his interest. But I just wanted to use my little time here and I'll, and I'll shut up. But I wanted everybody to acknowledge the baseball legend of Cape Verde. Legends, there was one just talking to you. So, uh, just thinking up here, and I, I wanted to be sure we had a, we had people uh, surrounding here, but this is baseball that's up here. This is baseball, and isn't it great that we can do it together? That's how Cape Girardeau works. It's doing things together. So, with that, with that, we'll close. Uh, the news conference has been uh, great. I'm very proud uh, and honored to be able to be a part of it. Uh, we will, uh, for the press, uh, be able to be here for uh, questions and comments uh, following. I thank all of you for being here. Uh, great crowd to show up for this. Uh, look, looking forward to uh, the bat cracking uh, in 19 and more to come with uh, the Montclair League and, and, and more baseball at and no more rainouts, just no more rainouts <laughs> at Capitol Field. Thank you all for being here. <laughs>